Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll get started. Uh, this session is about an hour. Uh, I'd like to get the viewpoints of the panelists here. Hopefully, we'll have a nice, interesting chat and a discussion. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to have a, a two-minute introduction, one by one. If you could just please introduce yourself uh, in two minutes and just give a brief background of what you do right now. Thank you, Bar. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Danny Praditya. Now I'm in charge as the uh, director of commerce of Perusahaan Gas Negara Tbk. So my main responsibility is to monetize all the uh, portfolio of gas supply from PGN and also uh, generating new and uh, new market development for natural gas. Thank you. Thank you. Terima uh, kasih, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Uh, my name is uh, Sampai Purba. Uh, I'm in Skakan Migas. Actually, my position now, I've been uh, redeployed to oh. new position. Uh, I'm now a senior advisor to the head of Skakan Migas. Oh, okay. But don't worry, Pak. I used to be with commercial side. Okay. And <laughs> Pak Dani is one of almost my uh, daily mitra. <laughs> okay. And okay. brother as well. Yes. And also Pak Barak. Okay. Then. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Yes, okay, bye -bye. Uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bara Ilma Rosa. I'm from LNG Commercial uh, Pertamina. Uh, actually, uh, currently I am uh, in Pertamina. Uh, we are uh, government representative to sell the LNG government portion. <laughs> yes, pa, sampai portion. Yeah, I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Pak. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Satya Hanga Yuda. Widya Putra. So I have three first names and two last names, but for simplicity, you can call me Hunga. And I am one of the founders of the Indonesian Energy and Environmental Institute, IE2I. IE2I is a non-governmental organization that was established in August of 2016. Our overarching objective, our vision and mission statement is to raise awareness about global warming and its neg negative consequences, which is climate change. Now we realize that climate change is not a one-man problem, but it's everyone's problem. And so we cannot blame the government, we cannot blame the private sector. Everyone must get together to be able to lay down what are the problems and what are the solutions. Now, in order to facilitate this, IE2I hosts focus group discussions, FGDs, summits, meetings, you know, conferences to discuss about issues related to the energy and the environment. Uh, we also do social work where we go to rural areas to teach and educate locals about global warming and climate change and how to live sustainably. Uh, not only are we an NGO, but we're also a think tank. So we do research, we do analysis on both energy and environmental related problems, uh, not only in Indonesia, but also around the world. But our main focus and concentration is in Indonesia because we realize that uh, there's or already a lot of problems in this country. Why focus on all countries around the world? You must prioritize your own home country first before you think abroad. So that's the gist of uh, IE2I. I don't want to go too long and broad into my uh, NGO. Um, well, thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Hanga. Uh, Vishal, over to you. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Vishal Agarwal. I'm a partner with the McKinsey & Company. Uh, I've been uh, working in Indonesia for about 10 years now, uh, largely in the energy and oil and gas sector. Uh, worked uh, mostly in the upstream uh, and the midstream uh, gas. Uh, outside of Indonesia, I've worked in uh, Malaysia, Thailand, India, and, and a bit in Australia. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just to remind all of you, actually, we are covering this uh, uh, whole session online for uh, the next few days. After a few days, it will be available on our YouTube channels and our social media channels. So I encourage you to please participate in a discussion. We'll have a Q&A session after about 40 minutes. So I'll get started, actually, with the 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 idea is actually to try and find some solutions. I don't think we should spend too much time trying to define the problem because at the moment we do know that there is a huge opportunity as well as a challenge, right? So I would like to have a discussion to hear more about how you feel we can have solutions. What are the short wins that we can have and what are your ideas that could be uh, influencing people to think more about how we can get to where we want to go in the next few years. So I'd like to actually have Maybe I can invite Hanga to just give a brief overview of where is the industry at the moment. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Sachin. 
So as of now, the natural gas industry in Indonesia in 2017, we see that the growth in the demand for natural gas has exceeded the growth in the supply of natural gas because of an expanding economy, a rising middle class, and rapid urbanization. But this is not to say that Indonesia is at a shortage of natural gas. When we look at volume in terms of the supply of natural gas, we have more supply than demand. But Indonesia must be able to uh, improve its infrastructure uh, to supply demand, and we still have committed export demand that we have to fulfill from our previous long-term contracts. Our, our, our gas reserves are mainly located in Natuna, South Sumatra, East Kalimantan, Sulawesi, Masela, and West Papua. While our demand centers are mainly revolving around the islands of Java and Sumatra. Uh, we need to have more import terminals as well as be able to integrate and interconnect our pipelines. Uh, that way we're able to explore and produce natural gas at a cheap price. When prices are cheap, this will attract industries. It'll make industries more competitive and it'll drive economic growth. Because now natural gas is not only seen as a revenue generator, generator but a prime mover economy. Uh, Indonesia has been focusing on using gas for its domestic purposes. Uh, but if you look at the gas production in Indonesia, Indonesia is now leading more towards energy security than self-sufficiency. The difference between energy security and self-sufficiency is that with self-sufficiency, you can rely on your domestic natural gas production to satisfy demand. With energy security, it can come from domestic, but it can also come from import. As long as you secure enough natural gas to be able to satisfy demand, then you're okay. Now, Indonesia, in the natural gas sector, we're leading more towards energy security than self-sufficiency. We must be able to divert this and be more self-sustainable and be more, have more self-sufficiency once it comes to natural gas. If we do import LNG, the imported LNG has to be cheaper than domestic LNG. And as most of you are aware, based on ministerial decree, number 11 of 2017, there may be a potential challenge if the price of imported LNG for electricity and the price of domestically produced LNG for electricity cannot be less than or equal to 11.5% of ICP, which is international crude price. Now, <clears throat> because of this issue, if we do import LNG, there must be a free destination clause, which is what Pertamina did in its 20-year contract with Shenyar Energy, which I'm sure Pak Bara will dive into later on in the conversation. Now, to reduce price, the government must rule the whole value chain, the upstream, midstream, and downstream, and more importantly, when it reaches the end of the pipeline and to the customer. Because when it reaches the end of the pipeline to the customer, it's in a business-to-business -business scenario, which can make the price more expensive. Now, in order to reduce price, the government must be able to regulate the upstream, the midstream, downstream, the end of the main pipeline towards the customer. Now, the challenge ahead for Indonesia is to be able to use its own natural resources and produce gas at a price that is competitive and viable for everyone. Thank you. Okay. I think that's a good summary. It kind of outlines the uh, industry where we are at. Uh, I think, Padani, uh, could you comment on that uh, from a perspective of PGN? Thank you, Pat. Uh, first of all, PGN, uh, we are currently assessing the situation and we want to have a look at this issue uh, very carefully. And uh, we would like to have a holistic perspective about uh, this issue. Uh, I think we will start from basic. The basic thing is about supply and demand. At this point, I think we have uh, quite a valid data about the supply from the upstream side. Thank you for, for Pak Sampe that can provide uh, the government with quite uh, valid data. But unfortunately, from the demand side, we don't have any uh, official and valid number yet. Just for example, uh, of course, when we are talking about natural gas, the anchor demand or off-taker would be from power sectors. Even from power sectors, we see that the uh, growth of the demand, which has forecasted to be around 3 to 4% per annum, realistically, at this point, year on year, is only about 03 to 04 percent 
That means it's only one tenth of the forecasted demand. So uh, when we are talking about import, we have to think also about the sustainability of the upstream sectors in Indonesia. Of course, maybe at this point, import can be a good option because of the uh, oil price. And now maybe Qatar can offer us a very good pricing on the LNG. But we have to remember that the, the upstream industry also support the government, not only from the revenue of the gas, but also from tax, also as economic driver. Yes, we can import uh, cheaper gas, but then when we need our reserve to be monetized, then the infrastructures will not be there. So uh, I think when we are talking about uh, permitting or giving license to import, it has to be coming directly from the government and it's a sole discretion from the government to define how much quota that we can import. So it will have to be just uh, to balance the, 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 the energy demand from the natural gas side. Because if we just import without any guidance, and everybody can import as, as long as they like it, and we don't have uh, energy security also for our own production, I think our fellow from the upstream sectors will support my comment, especially from Eskarka, because we need to think about the sustainability of the industry. I think that's my comment from. Thank you, Padani. Achi, you put it very well. Uh, uh, I think we should ask Pasampe. Pasampe, could you please uh, add a little bit? Uh, what's your view from Eskakamika's perspective to what Padani just said?